Hello and welcome back. This is Greg French. Today we're going to be talking about Cisco Router Basics, uh, Router RIP version 2, and we're going to be subnetting a Class C, uh, creating a subnet. Uh, let's get started. Uh, here's a uh, typical network that we're going to create in Packet Tracer, uh, showing uh, the different uh, networks that are going to be creating. Actually, we're going to have one, two, three, four separate networks. The problems that we usually uh, get on a CCNA test is we get a problem such as this. The problem is to solve uh, with subnetting. Customer has purchased a IP address. Uh, this is just theoretical. You can't even purchase this because it's a private IP address. 192.168.1.0. He wants to use it to provide his company with four networks of at least 50 hosts each. And we can actually do that with this uh, individual IP address. Uh, when, when, you, when you purchase an IP address, and if you purchase a network, uh, you'll get this last octet here, and there's a, a complete uh, octet, so you have four or eight zeros. And with those zeros, the full octet, we can go ahead and uh, make those any numbers uh, that we want, since we've purchased this uh, complete, uh, complete range from 1 to 255. And uh, I'll show you how to do that. <clears throat> Here we're going to have a, a new subnet uh, mass that we're going to create by taking two of those bits in that last octet, the two high order bits, and setting them high. Uh, that would that that bit there would be 128. The bit next to it would be 64. If we add those two together, we get 192. So our new subnet mass that we're going to be creating here it would be 255.255.255.192. .255 and that's just showing that we've taken two bits from this last octet and we've added them to our network range. By taking two bits, that's going to give us four combinations, our four networks. I'll show you. Uh, the first one is our original with a zero. We, all those eight bits are all placed at zero. The next one, we're going to take that 64th bit, which is the second one of the two that we're borrowing from that uh, octet for network. We set it high and we get the number 64. So that becomes our second network. Our third network, we're going to take the 128, set it high, and turn the 64 off. That gives us a third network of 128. And then the last combination is setting both high, and we get 192. So this way, just by taking two bits, we've set up four networks. 0, 64, 128, and 192. Now, it used to be we had, had to subtract the 0 and the 192 on the network side, but we don't do that anymore. Uh, version 2 of RIP allows us to now... Uh, add those two networks back in. So we've got four networks to work with. Let's look at the uh, host side. The host side, uh, we've got six bits that we can uh, set to any, any combination of ones and zeros. Those six bits give us a total of 63. And if you add back in the zero, that gives us 64 combinations. Uh, on the host side, we do subtract out the two. We take out the first and the last, because the first will be our network address. And the last will be a broadcast. So we can't use either one of those to assign uh, hosts. So we have 64 combinations. Minus 2 gives us 62 usable hosts. That's on the first one. Second one, 64. We start at number 65. That would be our first IP address that we can assign to a host. And we go up to 127. We can't go to 128 because that's our next, next network. So again, we have uh, 64 combinations. If you add back in 0, we subtract 2, and we get 62 usable hosts. And then at 128, we go to 129 and 191 to 191 because we can't go to 192 because that's a new network. So again, we have 64 combinations if you add back in the zero. Subtract two, again, 62 hosts. And the same for the last one. We got 192. We could take it all the way up to actually 255, but we don't use 255 or zero. So again, that's 64 minus two, which gives us 62 hosts. So we have four new networks, uh, 62 hosts each. Uh, the problem only asks for 50 hosts, so 62 gives us plenty of extra ones that we could be assigning to printers or, or other devices. I'm uh, going to go ahead and uh, configure our network. We're going to start off with the first PC, which is PC0. We're going to assign it uh, an address uh, in the, in the 192.168.1.0 network. So we're going to assign 2 to the PC and we're going to reserve the number one for the default gateway and that'll be assigned to the router port. Again, we have to remember to add in our new uh, subnet mask, which is 255.255.255.192. .255 .255 
Uh, if we go ahead and, and from PC0 try to ping uh, our last PC in this line, which is going to be uh, at the uh, 182 address, and the IP address for that's going to be 192.168.1.194. That'll be the IP address for that last PC. If we, try to, if we try to ping it without setting up the routers, we're going to get this uh, request timed out. And we're going to get four losses, uh, and it shows you four losses. So we're going to come up to our first router, and we're going to be uh, first configuring the fast Ethernet port. And we're going to give it 192.168.1.1. And with our new subnet mask, 255.255.255.192. And no shutdown, that turns that port on. We try to ping again. Uh, this time we get a destination unreachable. It's going to go ahead and have, and from that ping, give us this information because it does, it does get to the port of the default gateway, but it doesn't know where to send it or how to send it. So we get this destination unreachable. So now we're going to go ahead and set up our serial port uh, that's going to be leaving that router, and uh, that IP address is going to be 192.168.1 uh, or dot 65 because our new IP address for that network is 64. So 65 is the first usable IP address. So we'll send it to that port. Again, we got to make sure we put in our new subnet mask. It ends with dot 192 and no shutdown. On the next router, which is now router one, which is the second router since we started with router zero, we're going to go ahead and on the serial port that's connected to router zero, we're going to put in the IP address 192.168. Dot 66 again in the 64 uh, network range and again using that dot 192 uh, subnet mask and again turn that port on by uh, putting in the command no shutdown now if we try to uh, ping across we're going to find that uh, we get a reply from uh, our dot 66 but again it's going to say destination host unreachable because it, it can't get through the other routers but it did get us uh, at least to this port uh, .66. If we uh, go ahead and configure the other side of this router, which is going to be serial number uh, 0 slash 1 slash 1, uh, it's a new network. It's going to be network uh, 128. We're going to assign the first IP address of .129, again using our .182 subnet mask and then turning that on. And on router 2, that, that port that's connected to the uh, 128 network, we're going to assign it an IP address of dot .130. Uh, again, we're going to be using the same IP address, 255.255.255.192. Uh, the zero is wrong. It should be 192. Uh, again, no shutdown. We'll turn that on. And we'll try pinging. And again, we get destination host unreachable. Now, we're going to go ahead and uh, in our PC... We're going to assign an IP address 192.168.194, new subnet mask uh, dot .192, and our default gateway is going to be dot .193. And now if we ping that, we're going to get, uh, if everything is set up right, including that one subnet mask that had the zero, we'll get our responses back uh, from dot .194. And we get four responses back, so we're able to ping through. The network looks like it's working without any problem. And if we look at it, we can see the lights are all on green. That means they're all on. At least they're on. We're not really sure if they're working, but that ping from PC0 to PC1 shows that it is working. Now, when we're subnetting uh, Class C subnets, it gets a little confusing because we're not dealing with zeros in that last octet anymore. We're actually dealing with numbers. And those numbers uh, could possibly be uh, networks and we have to be careful not to try to assign a network address to a host uh, but again this gets you started in subnetting class C uh, IP addresses which uh, for some the CCNA has been a little bit of a difficult area but once you uh, begin to see how that last octet breaks down with the ones and zeros it, it pretty much comes together hope this uh, is helping uh, I'm going to be doing a couple more I'll go back to a uh, class A uh, subnet, which you see used a lot in uh, small businesses, uh, schools, other places. And uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.